Hi and welcome to this video. The goal for this video is to help you become experts in mid-journey and teach you how to create stunning images using AI. We'll do so by sharing all the tips I wish I knew when starting working with mid-journey. First, we'll quickly cover the mere basics of mid-journey in Discord and the remix mode. In part 2 I'll share the tips that help you work much much more efficiently in Discord, like direct messages and the show command. And finally I will share amazing tips that help you create even better illustrations with the image prompt. By the end of this video, you'll know how to create mind-blowing illustrations in an efficient way. So stay tuned, because you're going to want all the tips, believe me. Ok let's dive in and fire up mid-journey. So when I started using mid-journey, I was wondering why I needed to create a Discord account when all I wanted to do is use mid-journey. So let me quickly explain. Midjourney is an independent research lab that has developed the model that creates all these images using AI. But you'll need a way to communicate with this model right? This where Discord comes in. Discord is a community application that allows you to communicate with others. Midjourney has created their own Discord server so that you can interact with the Midjourney bot and with other members if you like. Let's enter a newbie's room and create an image. You can simply type in slash imagine followed by a short text description. The bot will then generate a grid of images for you. It takes about a minute. So, once the initial image grid has been generated, you will notice two rows of buttons appearing on your screen. If you're exciting about one of the images, you can use the corresponding U button to upscale the image. If you like one of the images, but you want to see variations of it, you can use the corresponding V button. Now here's a great tip. If you want to change specific features of an image, you can use the remix mode. The mid-journey bot will now generate an image using the new prompt with influence from the starting image. Type prefer remix to turn the remix mode on and off. If you don't like any of the images, you can generate a new set of images using the reroll image button. Ok now that we've covered the basics, let's move on to the tips that will make your life a lot easier. As you may have noticed, the newbies channels move really really fast. When I started, I found it very difficult to keep track of my own jobs. So I was wondering, how's everyone doing this? The first tip is to work with direct messages with the mid-journey bot. To start a private conversation, Simply click on the mid-journey bot in the member list, and say hi. This will begin your direct message conversation, and you can use the imagine command again to start a new job. This way, you don't have to worry about keeping track of your job in a busy channel. If you don't see messages from the bot, adjust your privacy settings. Your other option is to create your own Discord server. Just invite the mid-journey bot and you can interact with it in a similar way as in the mid-journey community. Select the mid-journey bot from the user list, and then click add to server and select the right one. Now you can start generating illustrations in your own server. Now there are also other tips that can help you work more efficiently. Like the emoticons. For example, you can use the X emoji to cancel a job or delete an image from the mid-journey website. Another one is the envelope emoji. You can use it to send a completed job to direct messages. The direct message will include the image's seed number and job ID. This only works for your own jobs though. If you want to learn more about seed numbers, check out my other movies. Do you want to find one of your own previous jobs in Discord again? First retrieve the job ID, the unique identifier of each image. Now use the show command to retrieve the job in Discord. Just type in slash show, followed by the job ID. I've used this a lot to move jobs to my own server. Ok now that there's no need to scroll up and down anymore, let's move on to the creative part. If you want to create the most amazing pictures, it's important to start with the structure of the imagine command. And make sure you know how to use each part effectively. It has four parts. The command imagine, the image prompt, 
the text prompt and the parameters. First off, let's talk about the text prompts. As you know, you can type a description of the image you want to create, and the Midjourney bot will do its magic. But there are some tips that will come in handy when writing these text prompts. For example, did you know that you can use emoticons in your text? And did you know that you can use double colons to separate different concepts in your prompt? Let's take car seat, for example. For this prompt, the words are considered together, and the mid-journey bot produces images of a car seat for kids. If the prompt is separated into two parts, both concepts are considered separately, creating a picture of well. You tell me. You can also assign weights to emphasize something. For example, this prompt generates an image that has way more focus on the seat than the car. If you want to remove elements, you can add negative weights. If you don't like purple in this image for example, you can add purple with a negative weight, and it will generate new images without it. Do note that the sum of all weights must be a positive number, otherwise you're basically telling Midjourney to delete more than to add. Also note that it's about the ratio between the elements. That means that this is the same. Okay, let's move on to the image prompt. My favorite feature. Image prompts always go at the front, followed by text or another image prompt. It's an awesome way to give your text a style twist. Or to combine the style of multiple images. You can just type in the web address. The address must be a direct link to an online image and end in an extension like PNG, GIF, or JPG. You can also upload an image. Upload a file and drag the image file into the prompt box. Isn't it awesome how easy it is to give it a totally different style? Okay, now let's talk about parameters. Parameters are your secret weapon. You can add one or more to the end of a prompt and completely change the way your image is generated. We'll discuss a few great parameters in this video. If you like to learn more about others, check out the links to my other videos below. The first parameter is version. Midjourney constantly releases updated models. The latest model is set as the default, but did you know that you can use other models too? All you need to do is add version or v after your text prompt. But why would you want to use a different model? Well, it all comes down to the type of images you're working with. Some models might be better suited for certain types of images, so it's worth experimenting with different versions to see which one works best for you. For the rest of this video, we'll use version 4, which happens to be the current default model. Now let's talk about the aspect ratio. Simply put, it's the width to height ratio of an image, expressed as two numbers separated by a colon. When you use the aspect or AR parameter, you can change the aspect ratio of your generated image. It can have a big impact on the final look of your image. So, if you're looking to create images with a specific look or feel, playing around with the aspect ratio is a great way to experiment and find what works best for you. The default aspect ratio is 1 colon 1, which creates a square image. But you can use whole numbers to specify different ratios. These are commonly used ratios. For the current default model one side can maximally be twice as big as the other. But this is different for each model. Are you looking to add some unpredictability to your image grids? Then you'll want to use the chaos parameter. The default chaos value is zero and it gives a reliable and repeatable outcome. By adjusting this setting up to 100, you can control just how varied your image compositions will be. Let's move to the quality parameter. By adjusting this setting, you can control how much time is spent processing your image and the level of detail that it will have. The default model accepts values of 0 0.25, 0 0.5, and 1, where 1 is the default quality value. If you set the quality value to a lower number, you get less details in your image, 
but it will also take less time to generate. It doesn't impact the image resolution. Let's move on to the stylize parameter. The mid-journey bot has been trained on color, composition, and form. The value you set for stylize will determine just how strongly these artistic training is applied. By default, the stylize parameter is set to 100 and accepts whole numbers between 0 and 1000 when using version 4. If you want images that closely match your prompt, but may be less artistic, go for lower values. But if you really want to push the boundaries and create images that are super artistic, go for the high values. Now the no parameter. It provides the same feature as adding negative weights. So if you want to remove anything from your image, you can use this. Then the stop parameter. If you want to create blurry effects in your image, you can use the stop parameter to finish a job early in the process. The default value is 100. To use the stop parameter, enter a value between 10 and 100. That's it for now. Thanks for watching this video. Feel free to drop any questions below. And if you would like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.